All right, good morning. Another week here at the Antler office. The residency is officially finished. There's like no one here anymore except us. Now, a couple of things. This week we're launching the Slack integration officially. We've got our first partner call this afternoon for a demo. That's at 4.30. Right now it's about, what, 9 a.m.? Yep, we've got another one in two days. We've got some more people about to book some for the rest of the week, so that's really cool. Um, so yeah, Slack communities will be live. Now, a couple of things as well. Let's just get the coffee going. Over the weekend, I had this brainwave where Slack's probably got some weird API limits. When you, wait, is that us? Did I just get that? I'm tripping, man. Okay, so I had this brainwave over the weekend thinking Slack's probably got some weird rate limiting that goes on on their APIs, to which, yes, they do. And I figured out that they actually only support 60 requests per workspace per minute. All sounds fine, it seems generous, right? Until you start considering specific use cases, like for example, say I've got Susie's Marketing Club that launches like this afternoon and in the first hour, they get like 300 or 400 signups to their sub. That would be an amazing result, except for when you think about how we're going to attribute roles. Now the way that Slack currently works with my integration for sub is that they assign all the premium private channels that the user is going to be added into. And so say there was like 15 channels and then 300 people that signed up in an hour, that's like what, five or six people per minute that we need to add those 15 to. So five or six times 15, we're already up to like 75 or 90 premium channels we need to add in a minute. And keep in mind that the rate limit is 60. So what do we do? This is like a leak code problem all of a sudden. So I figured out we need to add some sort of queue system. And so that's what I did yesterday afternoon. I actually built this queue system where instead now of a user user simply coming in, authenticating with Slack, and then it just like adds the roles. It actually gets those roles and puts it into a new table, which is called, what I call it, Slack jobs. And essentially what it's doing every minute, there's a cron that's running on like AWS. It's gonna get the oldest Slack jobs that need to run. It's going to process them, and then essentially only limit it to 60 per workspace per minute. <sighs> so yeah, got that done yesterday. Today all I need to do is hook up the event bridge, and then I think we're pretty much good to go. That's my weekend for you. We've also got a brand new landing page. It's gonna go live later this week as well um, because I got roasted so hard. I thought, hey, why don't I put some effort in? This one actually looks sick though. So anyway, coffee? Oh, it's hot. You might want to hold the thing. All right, let's go do some work. We got our, we got our spot. Maddie, you can officially take Parve's seat. Moment of silence. Okay, good. All right guys, let's quickly interrupt this video to tell you about today's sponsor and I'll tell you about them in a second. But first, this is gonna be how you can validate a startup idea without spending any money and without wasting any time building something without knowing first that people actually wanna pay for it. Today's sponsor is Tally, shout out Tally. Let me show you how I checked out an idea for a repo bear a few months ago using Tally. All right, let's do it. So the hardest part about building a startup is knowing whether even anyone wants it. This is where Tally comes in. It's actually how myself and a coworker got people on a wait list and even got pre-purchases before we'd even started the build for the project Repo Bear we worked on a few months ago. So this is a three step process on how you can validate your idea super fast. It starts first with a landing page. You can use any landing page builder. You could even code it yourself. But to be honest, don't waste any time. Just jump on Webflow or Wix or like literally anything that you can create a landing page on. Number two, have some sort of feature overlay that comes right down to the bottom of your page where people know exactly what you're building. It looks really Really nice it feels really nice and finally they sign up to the waitlist where they're gonna click a button and that's gonna take them to a tally form and that's where today's sponsor comes in and so tally is like the simplest way to create forms for users to run through whether it's for business for sports for professional for whatever it is and especially in this case for validating a startup idea it is one of the most perfect ways to get user information for a ton of customers before you've done anything and this is how you can do it so jump into tally.so and this is quite literally my repo bear form for my private repository project that I wanted to validate. You can see, first of all, join the waitlist. what's your email, how many repositories do you have, you've got question after question after question after question, and believe it or not, people are willing to go through all of these steps, especially if that landing page first is communicating a solution to the problem that they have, which in this case was sharing private repositories. And so what I would do with Tally is I would create this beautiful form that goes all the way down, gets all the super valuable information for me as a engineer, as a founder, and then right at the end, as soon as we've added them to the waitlist, we give them a 90% off checkout form, which is like a Stripe payment link or a lemon squeezy 
link that gives them the opportunity to actually purchase maybe like a year subscription or a six month subscription at 90% off, which is like a no brainer. And believe it or not, we got like 20 to 30 pre-orders for 19 US dollars for the RepoBear product. Tally's got this super cool way to see all the data that you had in your submission. So if I log into Tally, this is one of the Tally forms that I had and you can see all of the answers here. How did you hear about RepoBear? Have you ever used another product to share a private repo? Yes or no? Super valuable information for me. How many private repositories are you likely to share? So like you can see, all of this is formulating a beautiful product in mind of exactly what my customers want. There's no guessing required anymore. They're telling me what I want. So shout out to Tally. If you guys want to do this too, you get a landing page going, you link them through to a Tally form. They complete this entire form, join your waitlist, and then you share them a Stripe payment link to see if they'll actually buy it. Go check out Tally. There's a link down below. Shout out Tally for sponsoring the video. Honestly, I think it's such a cool product. Completely free to get started. I even upgraded to Pro just because I wanted a few extra features, but it's so cheap. Go check it out. Tally.so. You guys are legends for sponsoring the video. Back to the video. Socket mode is not going to be suitable for like a production type environment. Socket mode is kind of like a Discord bot where it's just always listening on like an instance where my use case is more, I specifically want slash commands when people are verifying and potentially doing other slash commands in the future to be using like private post endpoints so that I can run my local, my staging, my staging testnet, my production, like all different environments. So yeah five hours of just like non-stop in the code. I just had a cron go out from AWS EventBridge using a Lambda, which just hit my back end, ran all the scheduled Slack jobs. So that's really cool. Uh, I've got a staging testnet environment now, so I can actually run like fake Stripe payments. Uh, really good for just like demos, which I've got one in an hour and a half, so I had to get all this done. Now I've actually got that full queue in place as well, which is really good, which means that we don't run the risk of overloading the Slack API. And we're only ever gonna be doing 60 events per workspace per minute. So feeling good. But holy moly, that was a wild few hours. <laughs> Let's just double check everything looks good. You know what I might do now? Give my brain a little bit of a break. Might just do some front end stuff. Keep the progress up on the landing page. Yeah, we're, it's, it's so funny you say that. We, uh, we're we gonna do a marketplace. Not just gonna be like an eBay or anywhere where anyone can publish. It's gonna ha start by hand curating. Awesome, man. Well, I'll, um, I'll keep you in the loop. Woo! All right, first demo for the Slack integration. Fully successful for Sub. Man, he was fizzing, so that's super sick. Um, all right, we've got another one tomorrow. We've got another one the next day. I'm actually heading out with Maddie and Maddie's family out to Long Island. So I'm gonna be without Wi-Fi, without internet, until I don't actually know. And I've got an integration demo. Oh, I gotta figure that out. Yeah, I don't know when I'm gonna have internet next, but we need to get this in production. What I have currently got is a new staging environment with a staging test, which essentially just lets me do these demos super fast. It's all with like test money. All the webhooks are firing. I've got the event bridge running, like everything beautiful, ready to go. So yeah. Holy moly, that was just like a perfect demo. Woo. Let's hope the others are just like that. All right, let's go. So we actually just hit 37,000 subscribers. What a day. It has been a wild day. We've got all of that done. And now all it means is that I can simply add new environment variables into production, do a quick merge across. I think we're good to go for Slack integration over the next 48 hours. That's pretty wild. Anyway. What a wild day. That was like a case of, I need to get this done before this meeting, and we did. Well, I did not know what to do in that situation. That was so awkward. They were all just standing there. <laughs> Another thing I was working on today was a little bit of the new landing page. It's a new concept I've been thinking of just to make it look like way more impressive to the average user when they first turn up. I think first impressions do count. And yes, I had all these people roasting me. That was so funny. But that's not the reason I'm changing it. I always wanted to change it. I just never really had time because I was always busy doing like all these core integrations. But now we're at a point where I've got the Discord going, I've got Slack going, WhatsApp's like 50% done as well. When I've got a little bit of downtime, what I like to... Bro, is this fire engine all good? What I like to do when I've got a little bit of downtime and I don't want to be like too heavy brain work, which is like all the back-end environment type stuff, I just jump into the front end. 
and that's where I can kind of just like creatively paint on a canvas and just like design really good stuff. So anyway, had a really good afternoon. Well, afternoon, it's more like an hour of good front end work. It's looking super clean and I think I might actually be able to deploy it alongside all the new Slack work, which is super exciting. That's like a double whammy. That'll coincide with our LinkedIn post, a couple of social posts as well. So it's almost like we've got a lot to announce being built, developed and shipped along with new clients coming on board to like demo and integrate onto the platform with. So big week ahead, super exciting. I don't know if I'll do any front end work tonight. I might squeeze in a little bit just because it's a nice little thing to like clock off and like feel a little bit creative and might jump into the dev club chat, see what the boys are up to and uh, yeah, head home for a beer, maybe even a run. I don't know, we'll see.